So how do you find your big science question? So of course there's different levels of questions. What I'm talking about here is a question, a main question, a, a fundamental question that may accompany you for many years, maybe your entire career or at least significant sections of your career. It's very important to have such a question, such a main guiding question in your career because this is what you're going to draw on um, in your day-to-day -day work. Because in your day-to-day -day work, as I've explained in another video, they will put a link, link to that in the description, your day-to-day -day work, of course, does not directly address that huge, big, fundamental question, but you have to break it down into smaller questions that are then the things that you work on. But it's important, psychologically, strategically, and whatever, to have that big question that you always relate everything back to. So some examples are from, from like our area, how does global change affect soil biodiversity? Or how do mycorrhizal fungi mediate ecosystem processes? Broad questions like that, they cannot be answered in a single study, but they sort of serve as guides for the research of uh, over many, many years and perhaps your entire career. So how do you get this question? I mean, this is different for everybody, I'm, I'm sure. Um, how do you get inspired, right? I mean, you can get inspired by reading an excellent book. You can get inspired by attending a seminar where somebody gives a fantastic lecture on some topic and you're just taken by that question afterwards. Um, or you read a paper or you talk to colleagues. Whatever it is, you need to seek that source of inspiration or maybe the inspiration will just also come your way. So it's important to realize that some of these are in your control. So you can choose to expose yourself to some of these opportunities, for example, by attending research seminars like your departmental seminars or online seminars, and you can derive inspiration from them. And you can choose to uh, broadly read some books and see which topics really interest you and what convinces you so much that you want to work on it for a significant period of your time, of a postdoc, a PhD, or even your entire career. Uh, others are not so much in your control. I think a lot of people uh, are inspired by teachers that they've had in high school or at college or at university, and they're so impressed by that, uh, by that example of that person that this is the decisive factor that leads you to have your question. That's, of course, somewhat outside of your control. And sometimes this question is sort of a love at first sight. You know, maybe you're just completely into fungi or um, I don't know what, or abatid mites or, or earthworms or whatever. But sometimes it may also be just something that matures over time. And, you know, I think in my case, it was certainly something like this. I think it was from the beginning, I was interested in, in plants. And then from plants, I got more interested in the roots. And from the roots, then I got more interested in the soil and the very interesting organisms that associate with the roots, like fungi. And then I got more into fungi, more and more into fungi. And so this is kind of how this, how this developed over time. And I really can't claim that I've always like played with soil and that it was an early childhood kind of story that led me to working with soil. No, it was not like that at all. Basically, it just started with my PhD. My PhD was on soil. That was because I found it interesting at the time and it just kind of stuck with me. And it's a fantastic topic, but it came really late. Well, so how do you know when you found this question that is so important to have because it's going to be a continuous source of motivation also when the going gets tough and things don't go your way. That's difficult to say, yeah. I mean, I mean, things can also change during your, during your career. So you're first more interested in this topic and then you, you shift after a couple of years and then you're more into something else. But, you know, the most important thing is that you have this question that excites you. How can you tell? Uh, oh, I don't know, this is going to be different, different for, <laughs> for a lot of different people, but you know, it makes me happy to think about it. So if I have this question that I really like, it makes me happy to just think around this problem, to read different bits of information I can add to this framework, to make little doodles of conceptual graphs, to think of papers I could write, to, you know, experiments I could conduct. The whole topic 
kind of is a source of joy and happiness. Then if that's, that's the case, then you know you found your question. Another sign is the more you know, the more you want to know. <laughs> so it doesn't get boring, right? So maybe you're interested in something, but then the more you find out, you think like, mm -hmm, well, maybe this is kind of trivial or well, I've had enough of this already. You know, this seems to be always the same stuff. But no, the more you know, the more you want to know. That's another very good sign that you, you have found your question. Or well, sometimes a good question and a question that really floats your boat is also one very likely actually that other people find also interesting. So it's, uh, it's uh, currently sort of a, a common thing that people think about, you know, people generally now think about mm, environmental pollution or about global change and soils are very much en vogue at the moment. They were not so much when I, like when I started my PhD in 1993, there was more like an exotic topic maybe at the time. So things change and of course you're going to pick up on these um, things that are currently on Vogue and so the chances are you get interested in something because also a lot of other people are interested in it. And of course that's, that's also good because then it's not just you caring about it, even though in the end there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> But it, you know, is is a lot better for obtaining funding, finding other people that work on it, for creating cr community and a network. If you are not just the, the only person that cares about a particular topic, yeah. So it's super important to get that question. But you know, if you are in doubt, if even your PhD is already on that topic that um, excites you the most, yeah, well, don't worry about it. Be patient. I think you will know when you have that question that really interests you most. And maybe it happens during your PhD and it leads you slightly away from your PhD topic. But remember, a PhD is not a, the end all. It's just an entrance ticket to a lifelong, ideally, work in, in the sciences. So you can, you have plenty of time to work on your ideas afterwards. So don't be too hard on yourself if you think maybe this thing that I'm doing during my PhD is not really the thing that's going to interest me most. Just just go easy on yourself and I think you, you will know when you encounter that question. And I hope you find a good one. See ya!